Hello and welcome uh, to the third session of uh, the EuroLeague Head Coaches uh, Board. Uh, I'm Maris Barkas from Eurocoops and uh, I have together with me via teleconference from uh, Tel Aviv, coach uh, Yanis Feropoulos, uh, who is the third in the line after uh, uh, Dimitris Edoudis and uh, coach Zeliko Bradovic, who will talk with us uh, during uh, this quarantine about uh, life and about uh, coaching and about sports in general, even in sports, if sports right now, coaches are not the priority. Uh, hello, Aris, and uh, hello, EuroLeague, and uh, I'm very happy that uh, uh, we have this uh, conference call and this uh, special interview. Although the days that we are uh, uh, running now are, are really difficult for all the humanity, some this type of uh, conversations I hope that will give to the people that they will uh, they will show uh, uh, all of this they will watch this uh, interview uh, some moments of uh, interest. We will start with some uh, fun questions because uh, you know what sort of plus how much uh, the Maccabi Tel Aviv fan uh, fans love you. And uh, the same applies to the fans of Olympiago. So we had a lot of questions and uh, we had to pick some of them. And then we will go to the second part of the interview, which will be, which will be a little bit uh, more uh, personal about uh, this whole situation right now and uh, how you cope with it. So uh, first fun question. Uh, this is coming from Tel Aviv. Uh, how hard or difficult is it to stay connected with your players and uh, your staff during uh, this situation? Yes, it's not easy. We try to make uh, very often uh, conference calls uh, with the players. Uh, we made one, all the team, with the owners, with the players, with the staff, uh, and to wish uh, for the Easter time. But also we have uh, through WhatsApp uh, groups that uh, we communicate with the players or with the staff. And we try to keep... Uh, in touch uh, all together, you know, during every week, once, twice, so everybody will know how is the other and uh, uh, how we feel, uh, if somebody has any problem to, to, to assist him. And in general, we keep a uh, contact, although it's not very easy to, to have it, uh, let's say, like it, it used to be, you know, with every personal meetings and <laughs> all the everyday uh, commitment that we had uh, one to the other. Okay, I get that uh, talking is easy uh, via teleconference, but uh, how do you think uh, is the best way to keep in shape on you personally and also for the team? Uh, our uh, trainer, our conditioning coach, uh, Reggio Fanan, uh, 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 brought to all of us, including myself, but mainly to the players, uh, a lot of equipment and uh, staff to work out at home and uh, gave uh, to all of us a special program, uh, how they can work out. So they have some dumplings, they have some ropes, some heavy ropes, some pads that they use to, to practice at home. And uh, he's following everybody and he's following all of us uh, day by day, uh, how much we work out, what exactly we are doing. And uh, we, we, we are trying to, to have all the players uh, uh, working out every day. So as much as they can to keep their shape. Uh, how do you manage to handle the pressure and suppress intervenience from your superior. I guess the question means the management. Uh, at this point, there is no such thing. But in general, you are used to work uh, in clubs with uh, high pressure. Yes, uh, this is true. I, I work always uh, with uh, clubs that they have big pressure, and I like this pressure. First of all, uh, uh, I like the pressure from, from myself. I put the pressure to myself and because I want to be better every day from one side. From the other side, I want to succeed with the club that I am now, Maccabi, and the previous club that I was. So I put bigger pressure, higher pressure than the management. 
to myself and to the to the team. So that means that uh, the pressure with a good way, of course. Eh? I want to make a parenthesis here because it's not a pressure that uh, brings you down. It's a press. It's a pressure that you feel it and makes you work harder and you know trying more and uh, always. Uh, want to get better and uh, win games and improve yourself as a player and as a coach, of course. So um, always I have these conditions to work and I love to work with pressure because if I don't feel pressure, that means that I don't have any interest. So I don't like this type of teams. But I don't believe in general that there is no pressure in, in, in basketball, in the sport in general. If you want to succeed, you have always pressure. One is this. Secondly, if, if uh, so far I didn't have any interfere for the management to my job. Uh, and believe me, some of you, even you are, as you know me a lot of years, you know how I don't... I don't have any doubt about my job, and if somebody wants to interfere to my job, for sure uh, I keep it outside. Uh, nobody can uh, can tell me what to do. I'm doing always what I believe. So if the management or the bosses or the owners wants to interfere to my job, that means that I have to go out of the team because yes. there is no there is no way, only my way. You should elaborate on that because many times there are fans that are saying that uh, the management is putting the pressure on a coach to do something or to sign a player or to do something else. This is not always the case. This is something that rarely happens and there are very few exceptions and the fans don't understand that. In many yeah. occasions, uh, the coach in a EuroLeague team is also the GM. Yes, exactly. And uh, this is uh, uh, this is exactly how we work in Europe in general, not only in Euroleague. And uh, I think it's very important this because, let's say, how we work with the team on the court, um, and coach uh, coach uh, coaches knows how which players and how you need to work from outside, and which players fit to your system and to your program. So. The more the the more that you work with this way, it's more effective, I believe. Okay, this is from Tel Aviv, <laughs> and it's a testament to the love that you enjoy there. How do you stay so awesome all the time? <laughs> it, it, it's, uh... it's not a question. I didn't want to embarrass you. No, it's okay. It's okay. No, no. <laughs> This is completely I just different. To include you, include it, uh, in order to demonstrate uh, the, the acceptance that you are joining right now in Tel Aviv. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, first, it's uh, it's a combination of a lot of uh, parameters. First of all, uh, I I'm trying to have a a, a good nutrition and uh, a healthy uh, way of living, meaning the food and also the workout. Uh, the combination of these two are very important. Uh, of course, when we have the regular season with a lot of games, sometimes I cannot work out as much as I can. But uh, I'm trying to take care about my food, not to eat a lot, not to eat food that they are not, uh, it's not healthy, uh, not to eat sometimes that uh, very late that uh, it's not good for the body, uh, for the digest. So I think that uh, all these combinations, plus that I have my family that uh, supporting me psychologically all the time with my wife, with my kids, that we are all together and very close to each other. Also, the psychological part keeps you alive and keeps you look like a, a, a person that he, he is alive. I am alive. Uh, what do you think about Maccabi this year? Because this is practically your second season in the club and uh, we have seen a team that has transformed for the better. Yes, I think uh, this season is a, was or is still, we don't know what tends to use, past or present, I don't know. Uh, let's hope that we will continue so I will, uh, I will uh, keep talking in present. 
So this season is a really good season for us and uh, completely different from the last season. Although last season when I took over the team, we changed the team and we changed the momentum from a negative uh, thinking about the team to a really positive uh, way of thinking and acting. And uh, I think uh, this year is an extension of last year. And this year is a, a, a much better season for us because we we had as a base the previous season and now we build uh, and our game on in in that situation and i believe that uh, uh, we played very fancy basketball nice nice uh, to watch basketball offensively and defensively and everybody loved to watch Maccabi and I had a lot of messages not only from, from Tel Aviv, from Maccabi fans all over the world, but also uh, neutral fans that they, that they like to watch how we, fi- how we fight and how we play and uh, the way of playing and the intensity and the, the willingness and the fighting spirit and um, they enjoy also basketball-wise the game. So we are very happy and proud how we played and we are very happy that uh, we succeeded uh, before the end of the season, of the regular season, to qualify to the playoffs so early um, uh, and, and coming to this point after five years that uh, Maccabi didn't participate to the playoffs. Hopefully we will continue the season and this is what we want all of us, to continue this uh, good season and uh, to participate to the playoffs and to be as competitive as we can. For third year, is, I think, is a big step for us. How do you make your, play- how do you make your players uh, believe in your system? I think that's, that, that's is, a question that should be <laughs> the holy grail for all uh, coaches around us. Yes, this is a very good question. And uh, first of all, when you enter the team as a coach, you need to to start to work. And through the practice, through the work, through the analysis of your philosophy, defensively, offensively, that you make some meetings. Also, you teach to them all this uh, to, to the players uh, during practices. And uh, then when this philosophy start to work on the court and you start to win games, This is the way how the players start to believe in the system and to the and to to the coach to their coach because uh, uh, when the players understand that uh, they are working really good and maybe uh, working really good means that they sometimes it's very heavy in a way with a lot of uh, not only practice because now we cannot practice a lot with so many games day by day but a lot of meetings and a lot of information that they need to. Owe to get to them and then to perform on the court. All this uh, w- way of working now uh, gives the trust that you need as a coach to the players. And when the players perform on the court by this way and they start to win games, then it's it's obvious that they, they understand that this is the way to play and this is the way uh, how the coach and the players They need to cooperate to to give the results and to bring the results. I think this is a question that is really connected to what you said right now. What has made this year's Maccabi so resilient? You have many injuries, goals. you had uh, seven or eight fit guys for some games and you always play to, to win and you won. What's the recipe? One part, one part is that uh, first of all uh, we work as I, I explained and I described uh, before, and uh, we work really hard, and uh, we work uh, with one direction, so everybody knew what uh, they supposed to do on the court. The other b- very important uh, issue for this, uh, for this uh, character, let's say, of the team, is uh, that. Uh, All the players, they understood that they have a big part and big role on the team. And this is very important because a team is like a big machine with small parts that if you take out of the machine one small part, the machine cannot work. 
So each one of the parks, bigger, uh, younger, older, uh, all the players are like parts of a machine. And if you take one part out, the machine cannot work. So everybody was ready to participate and to play. And uh, the, the good chemistry and the clear roles of, the, of each one player of the team, I think helped us a lot to, part, to, to fight the games with seven, eight, sometimes six players. I, there, are, there were games, especially in the Israeli league, that we play with six professional players and uh, four uh, players from the juniors. And um, this is not easy, but uh, everybody showed up and everybody helped the team. And I'm very proud how each one of our players played uh, with this way uh, till, till the moment that we stopped. How much of your time do you spend in the film room? In the film room, on the court, or uh, in general, how much film I watch? In general, in general. How, do, I, how much I, do you analyze your opponents and your own team weaknesses? A lot, a lot. Uh, of course, I have my colleagues, my assistant, uh, coaches that they, they, they watch the opponent and they scout, but also we watch ourselves. And also myself, uh, I watch every day film uh, from the moment that I wake up. Uh, I start to watch till the moment of the practice and then after practice. Uh, and uh, of course, we have a lot of meetings with uh, the coaches and uh, we, we analyze what we've seen and uh, what uh, we have to do. And everybody has his opinion, everybody has his idea and he, he expresses the idea. So we use the video a lot to analyze the opponent, a lot to put our strategy for every game, but also to criticize ourselves. And we call this video feedback video that we are watching not only ourselves, but also to the team to teach them through the video uh, what uh, went wrong and we need to improve or what uh, was really good and we need to keep it and to to continue it and even to improve it. So through the video, uh, especially now with this format of the EuroLeague new format that we are 18 teams, we have so many games, we have uh, league games, we have cup games, we have so many games all the season, there is no time uh, for practices. So the video is more important now, the video meetings, because these video meetings are like uh, practices. And these are the only way that we can teach to the players And the players, they have now, they need to, they, they adjusted already and they, they understand now, they, they get the information through the video and they, they, they perform on the court. It's harder. We, did, we, 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 we was not doing uh, like that, let's say, 10 years ago because we were watching video 10 years ago. Then we practice what we watch and we, we improve it through practices. Now, sometimes we're trying to do this, of course, now, but sometimes you don't have the, the time. So let's say the back-to-back -back games, something didn't went well to the previous game. You need to improve it only with one video meeting to play the next day. So you understand how important is the video now. Yes, sir. We, I give, we I give, excuse me, Aris, uh, we give a lot of uh, uh, attention to the video meetings and we give a lot of... Uh, how to say, important importance to these meetings. We try to make short meetings, not, not long, because the players need to get the information not after some minutes, you know, it's not good. But we make a lot of meetings and also individual meetings with the players to, to suggest them what, how they can improve their games. Yes, I was going to ask you that because you started your career as a coach at a really young age and you have... Uh, Witness the time of the VHS. So, yeah. <laughs> which is you are right. so high tech right, right now, I think that uh, it's a whole different era. You can prepare custom videos for every position, for every player, for yeah. every team. And it's much, much more easier right now. Technology has exactly. become part of the game. Exactly. I remember, first of all, uh, you are right. I was assistant coach 11 years in, uh, in top level. Uh, Euroleague level and uh, 
national team of Greece level, and I work with the videos a lot, so I know how hard is this job, and uh, I can understand the job of the assistant coaches because I was doing this a lot of years, and uh, but I can understand also how important is this part of the job. So I want here to give a big credit uh, to my assistants and uh, to Vasilis Yaragotelis, uh, to Tim Fanning, to Veli Koperovic, and to Noam Levy, that we are working, we are, work, we are working really good with the videos and with the scouting and with the feedback uh, of uh, our team. You have already kind of answered this question, but since it's already uh, on the list, I would do it. Will the EuroLeague season continue? That's the million dollar question right now. <laughs> First of all, uh, uh, I will answer with two ways. The first way is that we need to listen to the specialist because uh, we cannot say if the EuroLeague uh, will continue or not. The specialists, the doctors and the epidemiologists, they will uh, suggest, and the governments, uh, will suggest uh, what will happen. The second direction is what we want. And, of course, we want to continue the season. We want to play basketball. We miss uh, basketball. We miss... Uh, we are already one month out and uh, in quarantine, and we miss, let's say, all this rhythm that we had. It's not easy for us to stay at home, let's say. But we are disciplined. We are uh, coaches and we are players and we are disciplined in basketball and in football, in, uh, in any sport, I mean. Uh, but uh, the willingness is to continue. I think all, all the parts of the sport wants to continue. But the most important is the safety of uh, all the players, all the, the, the parts that they are involved during the games. The players, coaches, referees, uh, scoring table people, uh, fans, policemen who are, uh, you know, helping the, sh the security, I mean. So everybody needs, journalists, everybody needs to stay safe to make sure that there is uh, uh, really uh, control all this pandemic. And then after that, we can start. I hope that this... Uh, uh, will will uh, get better through the, the the days now. Anyway, what I hear out of basketball uh, from the specialists all over the world, I think that that they are trying slowly, slowly to get back to the normal way of living through stages, different stages. And uh, I think that uh, you know the 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 normal and the regular life will come back. Uh, hopefully we will finish the season. This is what we want, but we we wait what what and when uh, the specialists and the experts, the doctors, will will tell us. Okay, let let's go back to basketball. Uh, and that's a hypothetical question, but it's really interesting. And uh, I was surprised that a fan asked you that. If there still was Yugoslavia and you were the national team coach. Which players would you pick? If uh, can you repeat, please, the question? <laughs> if there still was Yugoslavia, yes, and you were United the national team coach. Which players would you pick? The national team of Yugoslavia. Yes, coach. Okay, for sure, all the all the uh, ex Yugoslavian players that they participate in now in uh, in uh, NBA. Don't it number one? But not only don't, let's say Bogdanovic, both the Serbian and the Croatian, Bielica, uh, uh, Jokic, Jokic, it's obvious, I, I should uh, mention him earlier. Uh, I think that uh, ex Yugoslavia uh, really was uh, the Yugoslavia, let's say, not ex. Yugoslavia used to be one big, uh, let's say, uh, power of the world champ the championship. Uh, always they produce great uh, players and still they have uh, great talents and great players. And uh, they, they, they are players that, uh, as, we, as we mentioned some names, they participate in the 
in the NBA, the best uh, league, uh, and uh, no, uh, for sure, I don't want to to miss somebody if I miss any name, but for sure there are also talented players in uh, in uh, Europe playing like uh, Teodosic, like Kalinic, you know, a lot of good players. Would you be interested in coaching the Greek national team? Uh, as you know, I was in national team two periods as assistant coach, and I know how I felt how important it is to to represent your national team as a coach. Uh, right now, the national team of Greece they, uh, has a very good coach, uh, Thanasis uh, Skurtopoulos, that he's doing a really good job uh, last years. And uh, I think we don't know what will happen with Coach Pitino. From the other side, I'm, uh, you know, with Maccabi Tel Aviv, and I'm really happy here in Tel Aviv and with Maccabi. And, uh, you know, uh, Aris, uh, that it's not easy to combine a EuroLeague team together with the national team. It's not easy. Uh, because uh, something you will miss. So... Maybe in the future, who knows? And this is also a question for the future. Would you return to Olympiacos if you got the chance? As I said, I'm uh, very happy now in Maccabi. I lived uh, great moments in Olympiacos. Olympiacos always will be in my heart. And uh, this is a team that um, we, we succeeded a lot of good things. We had also bad moments, like in every team. But uh, Olympiacos uh, is all, will be always in my heart with great feelings. They have uh, two great persons as uh, owners, the Angelopoulos brothers, that they are really uh, great uh, person personalities with uh, principles in their lives. And who knows? Also, Olympiacos right now, uh, in Olympiacos there is a great coach, uh, Jorgos uh, Barjokas, that is a great coach, and I think he's doing a great job. So, but nobody knows about the future. Nobody yeah. can tell. The, the, the last uh, question uh, from fans, it's again from Pireus. If you could turn back time, what would you change from your first tenure uh, in Olympiacos? Or Well, if you would change something. Look, uh, I believe that uh, a coach needs to take a lot of decisions, not only during a game, but there are a thousand decisions, but also during four years that I was in Olivia Cos. And during these four years, I made mistakes because uh, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody who is dealing with, with, with something and he has to take so many decisions, cannot be perfect in every decision that he takes. Uh, but uh, the moment that I took the decisions, I took the, these decisions with uh, only thinking one thing, the success of Olympiacos. So with the conditions that I took the decisions, I think the decisions were right, although after some while, some decisions were not right. I cannot regret for these decisions because the moment that I took the decisions, I believe that uh, they were the best decisions for the good of Olympiacos. For, uh, the only thing I can say is that from our mistakes, we learn and we learn and we get experience and we, we, we're getting better. All, all Not only now that I'm out of the club, also during my presence of the, in the club, you can say that uh, you make one mistake, you analyze it, and when you have to take the same decision during the, 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 the same season, you do it with the right way. So you learn from your mistakes. And this is normal. This is how each person gets better. Like I want to be better every day as a coach and as a person. Each person, is, 
each professional uh, overcomes his limits and gets better and better. And for sure, all this stuff that I, I've lived in Olympiacos and all these decisions that I took in Olympiacos helped me to get better during my presence in Olympiacos, but also as a professional to my continuation. Fair enough. And uh, now let's go to my questions. You have to blame me about them. Well, now, now, now more difficult questions. Now more, more difficult questions. Okay. More personal questions, I think. Okay, good. Uh, one thing that uh, not a lot of people know about you is that you have many NBA connections. You have coached many times in the summer league. Uh, would you consider at some point a move to the States? Uh, everything is open and there is always a possibility to do, to make one more step. But uh, right now I'm thinking only about Maccabi and how uh, we will uh, bring the team again to the glory days. And uh, my commitment to Maccabi is uh, fully. You never know your future. Nobody knows your future. Nobody knew. Let's say I didn't know that I will reach this point, let's say now to be the head coach of Maccabi Tel Aviv when I started basketball back to 1986-87 season. And uh, nobody knows his, what the destiny will bring, what the future will bring. So... Now I'm so devoted to my job here in Euroleague and I like the Euroleague basketball and I think it's a very competitive league and uh, really Euroleague is a league that uh, you see great things, great ideas from coaches, great uh, and talented players, great intensity of the games and very competitive games and very uh, fun to watch games for the spectators. And, uh, you know, it's unique. EuroLeague is uh, the top level of European basketball, and uh, I'm very happy that uh, I participate in this level. But you never know about NBA, what can happen. Everything is open. Yes, and I was going to ask you that, exactly that. What's the main difference in the game between Europe and the NBA right now? Uh, one big difference that uh, right now comes to my mind is uh, the intensity. I think the intensity in EuroLeague is uh, higher. Uh, the intensity that we play the games in, in the regular season is not the same like in, in, uh, in NBA. Uh, one also big, uh, big issue and big difference is that uh, because uh, in NBA there, are the, uh, there is the three-second defensive rule, so the defender cannot stay three seconds, more than three seconds in the, in the paint, they have more space to attack the rim. So... This is, uh, especially us in Maccabi, that we have a lot of NBA players. It's hard for them to adjust, let's say, from the NBA, that, uh, let's say, you drive, uh, uh, you pass by your player, and then uh, you have a, almost a straight line to the rim. But this is not uh, so easy in Europe. So they need to find a, a, a better way to adjust and a better way to, to act and to read the game and then to make a, an extra pass. So this is a big difference, too. And uh, I think also tactically, uh, I'm not saying that the NBA, the, there is no tactic, but uh, uh, I think in Europe we control all the game, tactic, the game tactically, the coaches. Uh, we, and we share the ball more in Europe. Uh, it's not so many isolations. It's not so many, we, we don't have so many um, one pass out situations, although the speed of uh, also in EuroLeague, the, the speed of ac action uh, is uh, higher now and the intensity is higher. Uh, I think that we share the ball more and we try to, with more patience, to find the best option to shoot. These are more or less the, the, the main differences that uh, I, I can see now. Of course, the organization of the NBA is uh, ahead uh, years ahead, uh, the European, also the EuroLeague basketball. And this is something that we need to understand that uh, we need to to watch also what they are doing because they are uh, uh, they are ahead of us. And uh, let's say 
comparing the trips, uh, the precautions, the, 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 the rehabilitation after the games, not only after injuries, the pre, 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 uh, prevention of, of injuries. So all this stuff are something that we need to, to improve in Europe. So from a coaching standpoint, are you happy that uh, one of your friends, uh, Mike Malone in Denver, is playing, uh, let's say, a kind of uh, European brand of basketball because also of your kids? Because they are sharing the ball, there are not so many isolations in their game, they are trying to have everyone participate in the offense, something that we don't see often in many NBA games. Yes, there are some coaches that they have this philosophy and they put their philosophy to the team. Mike Malone is a good friend of mine. We met 2000, uh, during 2006's uh, Summer League. Uh, he was assistant coach in uh, Cleveland Cavaliers that moment. And um, he's doing a great job in Denver. And I'm very happy for him and uh, how he, for first of all, how he played the game, but also the results that uh, he's bringing. And he's doing a great job. And, Really, you enjoy watching this type of basketball. Some NBA teams, they are doing this really good. And they are, of course, basketball is basketball. And there are some other ideas, like uh, other coaches that have different ideas. Every, every idea is respectful, of course. And every way of playing is, respect, is, is respected. But I think that, uh, to my uh, believing, uh, this type of basketball... Uh, is more close. Uh, you have been labeled in Greece for many years as a defensive oriented coach. Do you think that at this point in age, this is something that doesn't really apply to the game? Because uh, defense fit the offense and the opposite, you can really cut the game in defense and offense. Of course, and I was saying this from the moments of Olympiakos that they they said that I am a defensive coach. For sure, I like defense. I'm not. I'm not saying that because I like defense, I don't. Uh, we don't work on offense, or I don't like offense. Um, but uh, you know, it's uh, it's connected. As you said, if you play good defense, you play good offense. If you don't play good offense, you cannot play good defense. So everything is connected. And uh, let's say now in Maccabi we have. Uh, one of the best defenses, but also have uh, one of the best offenses. So the, for me, it's very important to keep a balance, you know. And a lot of times, how good you play in both ends of the court depends from the, from the roster that you have. So the way of playing, I think, I think that uh, the coach has his principles and his ideas, but... Uh, and he needs also to 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 be how to say flexible enough and wide minded to understand what the players can give to him because some players let's say they they can be a little out of of my philosophy but uh, to to get the best of them i need to be more flexible to open up a little my line and to include also this way of playing so this is also something that I was trying to do from the very first moment because I didn't have, as an assistant coach, only one coach to, to be taught. Uh, I was uh, taught from a lot of coaches that I cooperate and I was uh, his assistant, their assistant. And uh, also reading and uh, studying and uh, watching other coaches. So that means that Personally, myself, I'm trying to put in one direction all the players, of course, but uh, I want their talent to leave, to leave their talent free. I don't want to put uh, let's say barricades through their talent and to cut down, let's say, a good way of, that they have, a good uh, action that they can give. I don't want to cut it out of the team. Because this will be for the good of the team. And this is the priority. This is above everybody. Team. The success of the team. Above myself, above the players, above everybody. And that's why a lot of times we say in basketball that we, excuse me, <coughs> that we put our ego above the team. Okay. And this is something that uh, 
first of all myself I'm doing and also I I expect the players that they will do it and that's why we all together fight for the success of the team and this goes also to the tactics defense offense and uh, for me it's uh, very important uh, uh, our offense this this year and last year you saw that uh, uh, we try to play faster we try to 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 in, get involved all the players and we try to get advantage of the hardest player at the moment so these are all tactics that uh, we try to to put in our game and it was really effective uh, offensively not only defensively how do you feel about uh, the love that you are getting from Maccabi fans were you surprised for it uh, from it and uh, how do you explain it this is something unbelievable and this is something uh, amazing and incredible because um, this, uh, these emotions are unique and uh, I'm really uh, blessed that I'm living these moments uh, from Maccabi fans. Uh, they love me, but also I love them. And uh, this goes vice versa. And we have great relationship uh, from the first moment they they support me from the very first uh, game without uh, watching any any uh, how to say improvement results. yes any results any improvement uh, so slowly slowly when they saw that uh, something good is going on and something from last last season now I'm talking something good is going on and something is changing and you know everybody is saying and I believe also that uh, my mentality with the Maccabi mentality in general uh, is very connected and it's very combined uh, so we fit together really well and uh, you know our relationship is uh, is built uh, in uh, in a very strong uh, base so uh, it's something that uh, goes vice versa, as I said, and uh, I'm really happy how we express, uh, they express to myself their uh, love, and also I want always to give them back this love. Uh, that was a factor for your decision to stay in Tel Aviv with your family during the pandemic. Why, why did you choose that? Uh, in general, uh, we are very comfortable we feel very comfortable in uh, in Israel and in Tel Aviv and uh, first of all the country is very organized and is very friendly to to the foreigners and uh, friendly for a nice way of living with uh, bicycle roads and uh, walking uh, 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 parts uh, by the beach and uh, in general, let's say uh, uh, all the all the the people are very friendly to the foreigners. Uh, you can communicate uh, through English language uh, a lot. Uh, we are trying to learn also some Hebrew, but uh, it's it's completely opposite from 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 English and from Greek language, and it's not easy. It's hard, but we are working on that and. And uh, we, we, in general, we, we feel very comfortable here. And uh, secondly, our kid is going here in school, so we didn't know what uh, would happen with the school. Uh, also, I wanted to be close to the club, to, to stay here, to communicate with the owners, with the management, to see what we will do, how we will overcome this, uh, this situation that we are uh, in now and uh, all these reasons uh, uh, kept us here also we didn't want to risk uh, flying uh, after 12 of march uh, we didn't want to go to the airport uh, to the to, to get into the plane with a lot of people around us uh, so also for safety reasons and uh, we we are very happy that in greece uh, the situation is is uh, is not is getting uh, and in general, it was controlled as as much as the government, the specialists, the doctors uh, 
they control the the pandemic in uh, in Greece. But uh, it's also the same situation here in Israel. So uh, for all these reasons, we decided to stay here in in Tel Aviv. As a father, what's your primary concern from your family for your family and uh, your sons right now, but also in general? Right now, you know, our uh, younger son is living with us, so we are uh, all together in quarantine, and we 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 we're taking care of him. Uh, our uh, older son is in state in New York, and uh, he is making his internship after he graduated from university, and before he goes for the MBA uh, that he wants to make. So. Uh, we are a little, uh, you know, concerned about uh, his situation. We are uh, always in touch with him. Thank God we have the, the all these uh, new technologies that we can communicate as we communicate now through video meetings and uh, video calls. And we watch him and we talk to him a lot every day, a lot of hours. So uh, this is the primary now. In general, we want to, me and my wife, we wanted from the beginning to, to, to make good, uh, good kids and to teach them uh, uh, how to, to live their life with a decent way, uh, having respect for everybody and with principles and uh, getting the best knowledge that they could get for their life, this is how we are thinking and this is how we are trying to grow our, our kids. How do you typically spend your day right now? Uh, as we discussed before, uh, I have uh, one bicycle here that I, I ride uh, uh, day by day. I have some weights that I can lift and some ropes and some equipment that uh, I work out and uh, a lot of time to, you know, to make uh, a, a criticism about uh, uh, the game, about how we played so far, what we can improve, uh, what can go better, uh, which things that we, we could add to our game. Uh, scouting, let's say, all this period with basketball. Also walk, uh, watching some films. Uh, and in general, spend a lot of time with the family that this is something that uh, we missed uh, so many years. And th- in this period, I want to take advantage of this uh, free time to, uh, to spend with my family here and uh, to be with them because you you need to understand that uh, with our profession we missed all these years a lot of moments uh, with our families and especially with our kids that they were growing without us every day on, uh, at home outside of basketball uh, what's your favorite pastime look uh, we work uh, 24 hours a day uh, seven days per week. So even sometimes uh, when you go to sleep during your your uh, your sleeping uh, period, you think something. I wake up and I go. I write it down to not to forget it the next morning. So we are dealing with these um, uh, moments every day. We don't have a lot of uh, free time. Uh, the only free time is. Uh, I, I want to spend it with my family because, uh, as I said, uh, we, we we miss a lot of moments. I miss a lot of my friends that I cannot uh, communicate with them. And, you know, uh, a lot of times I say to my wife that uh, when we, through the regular season, that we have so many games, practices, so many things in our mind about, the, uh, about our job, uh, I'm, I, I told you that I, maybe some of our friends will think that I'm uh, anti-socialist. You know, I'm not uh, social enough. I can, uh, they call me, I don't call them back. Uh, they, I don't call them for uh, happy birthday. I don't call them during uh, uh, 
uh, uh, Christmas or uh, to, to wish to them or Easter time. I don't have, let's say, the time and we have so many concerns that this social part of our lives is apart from, the, from, from me. Uh, so now that I have more time, I'm trying to, to talk to my friends more. And I miss my friends, you know, it's, it's not easy. But they know that I'm always there for them. And if something bad will happen, no good. Uh, if something serious, let's say, happen, I'm always uh, for them. But uh, only the only moments, free moments that I have, very few, uh, I want to spend them uh, with my family. And, and that's true for most of us who are working yes, exactly. 24 hours per day and we have a lot of things in, my mind, in our minds. The only, thing, the only good thing from the whole this situation is that we can reconnect with people. Yes, 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 exactly, exactly, exactly. Uh, and uh, can you propose us, because everyone is doing it right now, a book or a movie or some kind of music that uh, will, it will help us uh, spend uh, this time of enclosure in our houses? <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, I like all type of music. And I listen uh, Greek music, of course, but also uh, pop music, rock, uh, R&B, and um, classical music sometimes. Depends the moment and depends, let's say, the feelings. And uh, I'm very, I like a lot to, to listen music. Let's say while I drive to, to, to the gym in every club I was working, I, I listen music. Uh, every day uh, and now that I have more time I listen more uh, to my favorite uh, uh, music uh, uh, bands and singers and uh, now I can see more uh, TV let's say films or uh, TV series and uh, what I can propose first of all uh, I want to say that I like uh, the Godfather series that uh, I believe that uh, you can watch um, so many times. I watched already so many times and whenever I watch it again and again, it's something, you know, unique and special uh, from a lot of uh, uh, options. Uh, not only direction, also ac uh, okay. action of, of the acting, yes and uh, costumes and uh, vocabulary and uh, dialogues and everything. And uh, when I want to relax a little bit, I, I watch again uh, the, the adventure of uh, Pink Panther because uh, this is something that uh, we, we used to watch them when we were young. And uh, Peter, Peter Sellers and... Uh, Blake Edwards uh, gives us uh, so many uh, funny moments and, uh, you know, all these series, three, four, three, four um, uh, different uh, films uh, are good. Uh, this is our age. Not, uh, maybe they are not so interested for the younger uh, ages, but... Oh, there are many we were... I have both box sets and the Pink, the Pink Panther and Godfather, uh, the Godfather series, even if... There is a lot of talk about the Godfather Part Three, but okay, I think that yeah. we can all pass that. Yes, exactly. And uh, one film that I like a lot is uh, the Best Offer. The Best Offer. Uh, that uh, it was with the paintings, uh, the guy that he's uh, uh, he collects uh, paintings and how uh, the big conspiracy that uh, with Jeffrey Rush the actor, a uh, big conspiracy how to, to, to steal the, uh, all these uh, paintings. And uh, it's, it's nice. I, I like this movie also. And uh, a lot of... Uh, I don't watch uh, 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 Casa de Papel. How you call this? I, I've never yes. watched this. That everybody's talking about this uh, TV series, but I don't watch this. I, I watch uh, now, I found it now, uh, during the quarantine, uh, the Endeavor. Endeavor is a British uh, 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 series, TV series, 
with uh, 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 how to say with uh, a detective that is uh, uh, trying to solve some murders, and I like this. More or less, this is what I'm watching, and uh, books. Uh, you know, during the the regular season, we don't have time to. During our job, we don't have time to read books. What we read is basketball books a lot of times. But I use uh, to read a lot uh, Nikos Kazantzakis. Uh, that um, is he's well known and uh, he he wrote great uh, great books uh, that um, I like a lot to read. This is more or less. I gave you a picture uh, glo- <laughs> about everything that. Oh, okay, uh, this isn't my question. There is a tradition yes. here. This is a, a, tra- a question uh, made by Zeli Kobratovic to you. And ah. it, it's connected to your favorite pastimes. And uh, uh, he had an interview with Darko Peric, who is among the stars of Casa de Papel. Okay. I guess he would not be offended. And yeah. <laughs> but. <laughs> If the quarantine goes on, maybe we, we all should watch all the series because Darko is yeah. a great guy and a fan yeah. of basketball. And uh, what it, it will mean to you if you could take now Zeliko in your hometown of Thessaloniki for a night out at uh, Antonis Ramos singing? <laughs> Good question from Zeliko. I like it. Uh, first of all, I like a lot uh, Adonis Ramos, and whenever I have the chance to listen to him, I'm, I'm going to listen to him. Uh, what will be my feeling in Thessaloniki? Uh, for a night out with Zeliko at Ramos. Okay. okay. This is a challenge for Zeliko. Uh, this is, he has an open uh, invitation to come in Thessaloniki. I will host him. Uh, to go together in Ramos. And then she will understand how I will feel. So, Zeliko, you have an open invitation. And, and in order to, to conclude this interview, this transition, uh, this, uh, in order to conclude this interview and this tradition, you have also to ask a question to the next coach who will be interviewed, uh, who is also a member of the UNLIC Head Coaches uh, Board, uh, Mr. Ergin Ataman. Ah, okay. Ergin. Uh, so, Ergin, how many times you dance in this period of, uh, of uh, quarantine? That's a great question. And I, I imagine that you have a reason to ask this. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't have a reason, but I, I, I try to ask something out of basketball. So, you know, so... Everybody will see a different option of ours, of uh, exactly, of, exactly. of course. That, that's what Not that, only that's what I mean. Yes, 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 yes. So we will be waiting. Uh, okay. Possibly this answer from Ergina Taman, uh, Aymaris Barkas, who spent uh, almost an hour, or a, yes. a little bit more, with Coach Yanis Feropoulos uh, from Tel Aviv. Uh, I hope uh, that. Uh, You were uh, satisfied by the questions and also, uh, more importantly, by the answers. Uh, I'm, sa- I'm more than satisfied, Coach, uh, and uh, I think that uh, uh, it was a conversation that uh, proves that uh, even in the direst of situations, we, we shouldn't give up and uh, we will have to wait for better times because sim- it's simple as that, better times will come. Yes. Uh, I want to thank you for the chance that you're giving me to to open my heart uh, about basketball and not only basketball in this, uh, through this uh, conversation uh, and interview that we had. Uh, I hope that, uh, as you said, uh, and I wish uh, that everybody will go, everything will go well. I want to say that uh, we want to support all the families that they lost uh, uh, some members of them. Uh, through this uh, pandemic and uh, I want to thank all uh, the doctors and the, uh, all the hospital, uh, all the, in, in every hospital, yeah, all the workers in the hospitals 
but they 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 spend all this period uh, fighting against this virus and helping all the people to 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 get uh, better and go healthy back to their homes. I want to help also all the workers that they are uh, working for us at this period during this period. First of all, the policemen, the the, the people that they are uh, uh, taking the decisions in the ministries, the specialists. Uh, uh, the workers in the supermarkets, uh, in the pharmacies, uh, in the um, that uh, in, on the street that they collecting the, the, the garbage. The, everybody, everybody is very important. Always uh, their job was very important, but now we can understand this importance. Um, the people that they bring uh, the delivery, the delivery food uh, people. Uh, all these people are so important in our life. But sometimes we don't understand. And in general, I wish that through this uh, pandemic and through this uh, quarantine that uh, so many countries we are uh, in, uh, I hope that uh, the world will be would be better uh, after this uh, pandemic and this quarantine, uh, counting more to the principles and to the uh, uh, normal way uh, of. Uh, uh, the humanity should be uh, all these years. Let's hope that those kind of values will guide us even when uh, the pandemic is over and uh, the world uh, returns to yeah. the normal uh, life and uh, to the normal situation that we are all accustomed to. We will, we, let's hope that we will all find a new appreciation for everyone, not only for yeah. human life, but for the person yeah. on our side. Exactly. And uh, about basketball, I, I wish that uh, Euroleague basketball will start again and uh, we will continue uh, to, to participate in the games and all these uh, great moments that we've lived and we will live uh, for the future. Okay, we are done. Thank you.